Okay, got another folding drone for you today. Uh, this one does actually fold up quite nicely and certainly fits in my uh, pocket, in my uh, trousers, my sort of side pocket. So it does go in pretty well. You can fly either with the transmitter uh, that it comes with, this one, or you've got an app you can fly it on as well. So uh, entirely up to you how you want to fly. And obviously uh, it's got a camera on the front, which I think is uh, angled down, as you can clearly see. Uh, and uh, we can fly FPV, so we can fly it with a transmitter and see what the actual quad scene in front of it. So. It's a nice looking one and I've done a review on a, a different uh, Skytech quad as well and I'll put a link down in the description. That was quite some time ago so uh, they usually seem pretty good so let's see how well we get on with this one. It folds out quite simply so it's the front arms out first of all and then the back ones and you have to fold it back together in the reverse of that obviously and as you can see it's a really windy day so I've tried to pick somewhere a little bit sheltered um, so how a little lightweight quad like this is going to cope with it I don't know but it'll be a good test for it won't it so, uh, I do like the colours and everything it looks it looks quite smart LEDs at the front and LEDs at the back we'll run through that in a second I'll just have a quick run through the transmitter for you uh, you've got uh, this little attachment here that actually just slots in holds your phone uh, and then pops on the top there and I'll put that back on in a second and I'm going to fly both using the uh, transmitter and I'll fly using the app as well uh, run through the functions on the transmitter it's a mode 2 transmitter which means your throttle is on the left hand side and also because both the sticks are centered it means we have altitude hold with it so uh, the throttles here we give it some throttle it will ascend pull the throttle down and it will descend if you once you let go of the throttle it will go back to center stick and then it will just literally stay at that level but it won't stay uh, in one position it's not GPS or anything so it could drift with the wind or if the trims are out or anything um, and there's loads of videos out there on how to set trims this is a bit unusual you have to press one button and then use the other stick to actually set the trim in on this one but uh, it's all explained in the instructions as well but invariably if you calibrate them uh, you don't usually need to do any trims at all I've found that with the majority of quads certainly so that's your throttle up and down. To turn to the right, it's called your in, you press it to the right and it will keep turning to the right. Push to the left, that's your to the left, so it's turning to the left. This is your direction stick, the right hand one. I'll swap over, so that would be forward. So the quad's camera is at the front of the quad. Uh, so push that and it goes forward. Pull it backwards, it comes backwards. Push it to the right, it goes to the right. Push it to the left, goes to the left. And this one has headless mode on it, which uh, in normal uh, flying mode, the front of the camera the front of the quad is always where the camera is so no matter what angle it's at if you press forward it's always going forward for the quad itself if you uh, put it in headless mode which is press this one quick press on that puts it into headless mode if we bound it up here so everything's facing that way no matter what angle the quads at forward is always away from you backwards towards you right that way and left that way and it doesn't matter even if you're turning the quad like that and you put it to the right it will keep going to the right so that's called headless so there's no head in mode basically uh, to cancel that you simply press that quick press again this is also your return to home button and you press and hold that for a second and then it will start heading back towards you ish <laughs> uh, they're never great because it hasn't got GPS so it doesn't really know where it took off from uh, but uh, they do work um, ish <laughs> um, but if it was past me and I pressed home uh, headless it could probably keep going that way sort of thing so <laughs> uh, but I don't think you ever fly these ones that far away and you've got quite good LEDs on this one so you should be able to see it okay if you want to flip it do your little stunts and uh, tricks with it you simply press this one here and then you choose what direction so that would flip it to the right flip it forward backwards and left uh, and once you've flipped it once it comes back to normal flying mode then and this one changes the rates and you simply press that and it gets into f higher rates so it gets faster basically so your, your pitch and your roll and, and certainly fighting against the wind you would need a higher rate but it also gives you a faster experience as well so to auto take off you simply uh, press this button here and that that starts the motor so then it will pop it up in the air and then you take control uh, to uh, calibrate it you simply pull the two sticks down and to the right you get flashing LEDs and that must be done where it's on somewhere flat and I'll show you that in a second anyway 
To start the motors, if you want to take off manually, uh, you simply pull the sticks down and in, uh, down into the bottom like that. That will start the props, then give it some throttle, and then you're in control. And this is also an emergency stop as well. If it's in flight and you've really screwed it up and it's, everything's gone wrong and there's, you know, <laughs> it's not your day for flying, then you want it dropped out of the sky, bring these two down, and it will simply cancel uh, the motor signal and it will literally drop from the sky so you could damage your quad. So that's only an emergency stop. For normal landing, just pull the throttle off and it will, it will descend and you can still control where it's going to go with descending and uh, once it actually gets on something that it stops going downwards, so whether you hand catch it, whether it's on the ground or a tabletop or anything, then the motors will stop after about a second. So I'm going to pop the uh, FPV, uh, the camera holder, uh, sorry, the phone, I'm going to pop the phone holder back on and uh, we're going to run through the start-up procedure. So on this particular one, you turn the quad on first of all, and I know this uh, slab's pretty level, so I'm actually going to calibrate it here to show you how that works. Just hold that for a second. You get uh, red LEDs at the back, and you get green ones at the front, and there's virtually nothing from the side. So, um, <laughs> But I do like it that they put red at the back. I, I like that. <laughs> so uh, to uh, turn, and then you turn on the transmitter, you get a beep beep and as you can see the LEDs have stopped flashing that means we're bound between the uh, quadcopter and the transmitter itself. There's one just other button that I didn't mention and that's this one here and that starts and stops your video if you don't have the Wi-Fi system. Uh, the Wi-Fi system you have to start and stop your video on your phone and I'll show you that in a second. So we're all bound up we, we could be ready to go but I want to run it with FPV so we can actually see what the, the quad is seeing and also we can record video as well. So turn your phone on and then uh, go into your Wi-Fi settings. Because we've already turned the actual quad on itself and, and I've actually played around with this indoors, it automatically has reconnected to, to this uh, Wi-Fi here. This doesn't use up any data roaming or anything. You don't need to be near another Wi-Fi signal. It basically just sets up a Wi-Fi hotspot here and we just link onto it. So it's just a link between your phone and your quad. So it's a really nice simple system. Let's go back to your home page and then the app for flying on this one is called Wi-Fi Go and when we press start on it we can either choose to have it with a controller which means you have no controls on the actual uh, phone itself or you can have it with the app control and that gives us control so this first time I'm going to do it with the controller and we don't have the controls here and you'll see the difference later on so we're all ready to go basically uh, to start and stop the video is simply on here and if you want to take stills you use this one and I've done a video on how to fly using an app and it's very similar to this one and I'll put a link down in the description for you. So. <laughs> I just had to leg it indoors so you can see everything's wet now. So. <laughs> Highlands, <laughs> autumn, gotta love it. Uh, okay, um, carrying on, hopefully where I dropped off last time. Uh, just gonna start recording some video. Now you can store in uh, VGA, uh, which is 640 by uh, 480 pixels, or you can turn it on to 1280 by 720 pixels, which is 720p. Um, I, the actual lens looks quite nice on it, so we'll actually see what the footage is like, so, but I'll give that my final bit in the review at the end. Let's start in the uh, VGA and just see how we go and just, just get going. So uh, to calibrate, pull the sticks down and to the right, you get a beep off the transmitter and you get flashing LEDs and that means the gyro is calibrated. You must do that somewhere flat uh, and level, level more than flat, sorry. Uh, it must be level and don't move it while it's doing it and hopefully we'll get a nice clean flight then. So I'm going to start the motors and it seems to have a weird sort of thing. You've got to pump the throttle up and down and then back again. So this is in low rate. The good thing is the wind's dropped right out. So. Whoa, it's a fast flipper, so it, you just hold that button in. It only seems to flip, uh, yeah, it only flips right and left, actually. Hmm, okay, so there we go. Uh, the FPV's working okay, screen isn't that. Uh, it's quite blocky, actually, on the screen, but uh, it's not too bad. It, it is working, I mean, I can fly with it, which is rather good. There we go. I don't think I recorded my screen this time, actually, so never mind. Yeah, that's not a bad little flyer. That's a full pitch in low rates. Let's just do a quick range test while we're on it. Uh, yeah, oh, that is quite low rates, actually. 
That's a good yeah, that's 50 meters there. Yeah, and it's working okay. That's fine. I'm going to turn that around slowly. There's a tiny bit of breeze in the garden still, but not a lot. Ah, there we go. There's a race. Race button wasn't working there for a second. I was getting a bit confused what was going on, so sorry about that. There we go. So this is now in high rates, and again, nothing, nothing too energetic at all. <laughs> it doesn't really do an awful lot more for it. It's just got a little bit more pitch and a little bit more roll, but it's really not an aggressive fly by any means. It's got more pitch than it has roll, that's for sure. It doesn't seem to do much on there. Oh, let's change it up to... Oh, let's just stop the video. Perhaps I have to uh, stop the video and then we'll pop that up in 720p and just see what that does. I'll do a sort of similar fly up, up around the garage there just to see what the difference is. Not noticing a lot, great lot of difference on the actual screen, I must admit. Well, that seems fine, actually. You can just about fly on FPV. It's not, not too bad. I was out of sight there, so you can see that it is working. And again, that's out of my sight now, so I'm just literally flying on FPV. Yeah, so it does work okay. That's doing all right. Yep, as you can see. Well, now I've come back into line of sight. Got flash nearly geez. It's four degrees in the Highlands today, so it's quite cold. So I wasn't expecting a lot out of the uh, battery. And it's a nice stable fly. Like I say, a tiny bit of breeze on me, but the actual altitude is holding absolutely no problem at all. I'm going to stop that. And the LEDs, you, you can see them. There's no problem with them. I just wish I had them a bit down the side as well, so let's just do a quick still. There we go. Oh, I've probably got the sound turned down. No, nope. doesn't seem to make a sound when it takes a shot. There we go, it's a little selfie there. And I will just swap that back to the VGA and just see whether or not that changes it. Yeah, it should do, I think. And then we'll have a look at the footage when I get back indoors. So. There we go, so now it's actually flying fine. So, oh, uh, let's try headless mode. So, so let's press this one for headless. And then even though the quad's facing sideways, away from me is that way, because that's the way we bound it, back towards me. And it doesn't matter if I turn it around, left and right, it's still going to be as we're in that orientation. So that is headless mode. So just turn that off. There we go. So now we're back to normal, so the front of the quad is the way forward is on the pitch. So let's try a return to home. So you just hold that down for a second or so. There we go, and sort of going over there, and we took off over there. So uh, it is <laughs> return to home is not really a great sign. So I'll perhaps show you if we do return to home there, and it should in theory come back over this way. It's still going that way, you see. Whoops. <laughs> go on, recover. I did recover it. There we go. So, uh, headless, if we were here and hit that, uh, sorry, return to home, press it here, it would just keep going in that direction. It's sort of a general direction back towards you. So, um, not really, <laughs> not really working, to be perfectly honest. But they don't, unless it's got a GPS, it's very, you'd be very lucky if it came back. You'd have to be almost away from it directly in that way and it'll come back towards you. So, okay, let's, uh, that all seems pretty good. I'll fly it on the app next. I might say range, good 50 metres, no trouble at all, and the FPV didn't sort of break up anymore. It does seem to be flying okay, actually. I might say for uh, this weather, uh, sort of 4 degrees, it's doing pretty good. Let's just see what I can do a bit of FPV through there. Yeah, we did that. <laughs> yeah, that works fine. Oh, I think we're just a bit low on the battery. Yep, there we go. The battery's gone. <laughs> like I say, it is cold. <laughs> okay, so we're going to fly this with the app this time. So I'll pop, turn the quad on first of all, and then just go into your Wi-Fi settings. And I can actually see it's already picked it up. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. There we go, connected automatically. Launch into the app. And then press start. And this time we're going to control it with the uh, app control, obviously. 
and you notice the difference now we've got the control sticks up here as well so and this is in mode 2 so the throttles on this side and uh, your direction stick is that side if I press this it changes it to mode 1 which puts your throttle on this side majority of quads uh, sort of toy grade quads and everything will fly mode 2 and you can't change them around so uh, personally I would learn to fly mode 2 um, uh, but uh, th there's actually four modes and you can look them up on the internet if you want to. <laughs> I've never ever <laughs> never ever tried anything else, always stuck with the one I've got. And if you notice the LEDs now have gone solid because we're actually bound up and it's ready to take off. So ready to go. So all the controls are pretty much the same and uh, I'm just going to go out and uh, give it a go really to see how we get on. Okay so we're going to start the video and just see whether we get, you won't get any difference to what we had before and I'll probably just leave it on the screen one anyway. So there we go. And we're up and away. There we are. So usually in uh, apps the controls are very docile in low rates. Oh, I've got flashing LEDs. Sorry, I'm, tr I'm trying to get out before it goes too dark. So, and if you notice that full pitch <laughs> in low rates uh, is pretty low. You've just got the two rates like you had with the uh, transmitter as well. So simply press that and now up in high rates. It gets it a little bit better. There we go, so yeah, no, it's flying okay. And again, you've still got your FPV, so you can still use that as well. Line up your shots with it. Let's just turn that around just a wee bit, there we go. I don't know whether that's because I've got cold hands, I'm not flying it particularly well. <laughs> It flies and does what it's supposed to do. It probably won't flip. No, it's not going to flip because the battery's too low. Uh, and as you can see, it got a fair old bit of uh, pitch on there and roll. So it's quite good. I'd like say the battery is low. It is really cold today, so it's, uh, it's not helping it by any means, sort of thing. And you can set up and do your, uh, your selfies as well. So you can just stop the video and take some stills if you want. There we go. And it's quite, it's a very wide angle lens, uh, they're getting wider and ri wider some of these ones uh, on some of the quads. I mean that's really quite close to me as you can see. Let's start the video again. You, uh, you can also fly this on your gyro. You have to press, uh, put your thumb on this the right hand side here like this and then we can fly it with the gyro. So put forward, backwards left and right and then you can still turn and you still do it again the kids grandkids love this i think this is great they just tilt the phone and it just goes where you like so as you can see that works pretty well so turn that one off whoops and then that gives us back into normal control i'm going to try and get the headless to work and seem to be able to work it did work when i played around with it before no it's still not yeah it doesn't seem to hold on headless it seems to turn it off after a few seconds yeah <laughs> don't quite know why <laughs> I thought I had that working better early but obviously not so. and you can actually send this one on a mission as well oh I don't like these so you do that and you just literally do a loop the loop and it will go round as you've sort of drawn it there uh, so whatever you tell it to do it will go in that sort of direction I I don't find a use for it, but if you do have a use for it, great. Um, share it with us, please, because I've never managed to find one. So there we go. It'll... The thing is, it doesn't remember it, so you don't know where it's going to go. And you can up how far it goes as well. So do a quick loop there. There we go. You can sort of do loops and things, but you can fly like that. <laughs> just don't get the, just don't get it. So. <laughs> there we go, and then back to normal, which is good. So. That battery wasn't too bad was it i mean i think it does this one does alert really low voltage warning is very low it's very early on sort of thing so uh, let's just try that on 720p and again i don't expect it oh yeah it is working now so that's good so let's do a little bit of footage and range you usually get about 30 meters out of these things to be honest i'll give it a quick test if we've still got enough battery which i'm surprised we have it's actually performing better now it's sort of behaving itself more ah, i think that battery's really going yeah it is <laughs> like i say 30 meters on a wi-fi system ain't bad and then just press that one to land and it'll bring it into land 
Oh, there we go. Make sure you stop your video. I was getting confused with the video controls because it actually shows it up down here, the counter. They usually show them under there. I've never known one pop it down the bottom there. Okay, so in conclusion, what do I think of it? Well, uh, as a folding drone, it's pretty good. I like uh, I like the sort of slim profile of it. It's not like the ultra slim ones, uh, but it's pretty good. And I did pop it in my pocket. It was easy to walk around with, no problem at all, or go into a bag. It's nice and lightweight, and uh, the, the sort of quick assembly is really a doddle, and that gives you quite a little bit of stability then. It's quite nice. Um, it, it flies flies well for a beginner I would say. The rates, the uh, high and low rates, even in the high rates it's still not particularly fast by any means but that's what it's aimed at I think uh, and quite smooth to fly around certainly in low rates you can keep it really nice and smooth. Uh, the uh, transmitter itself worked really well and I only found out now when I was peeling these off wondering what I thought they were just protectors. They actually tell you what the buttons do but they're printed on black, so you can't read them unless you put them on something white, which is kind of a weird setup, but hey-ho. Um, the transmitter worked really well, and the range was really good on it. It just uh, never really dropped out on me, to be honest, uh, when I tested it around the garden, certainly. So uh, no problem at all there with range. Even on the Wi-Fi, the range was good. Uh, once it got going, it was funny. Uh, you, you start up the Wi-Fi and it seems really laggy and it just seems to get better and better and after a minute or so it seems absolutely fine so uh, I have no reason for that at all. Uh, there are a few other issues with the app and before I uh, go through those I'll uh, say I'm reviewing another one at the moment with an app uh, and it was pretty not working at all well and uh, when I woke up in the morning there was a, an email come through you know app update or whatever I updated it and it's fine now so hopefully they'll, they'll get this nailed if they did it would be really good. Uh, right my issues with it are the video just cuts out as and when it likes or it keeps going and you don't know which it's going to do and it's still counting up in the video as well so it's a weird setup. Uh, the easiest thing is just to record your screen and it's about the same quality to be perfectly honest. Uh, the VGA stays up for FPV a lot better than the 720p obviously because of the amount of information it's drawing from it but this VGA is uh, I mean it's very low quality uh, and even the 720p isn't isn't good I don't think in my personal opinion but I do review a lot of drones if you you can see the footage I put like uh, raw footage up if you like it and think it's great then that's fine if you think it's awful and you're not going to buy it then that's fine as well it's as you know that you've got to make your own decision it's your cash all I can do is review what I get given so the issues with the app um, um, that's how it was so uh, if they cure it great um, the uh, I flew some F, quite a bit of FPV just playing around with it around the garden and you can fly FPV much better than a lot of other apps I've had they're too laggy um, and, and this one actually once it got going it was absolutely fine I could go between the trees and everything so uh, it's got some good points there uh, what you get with it you get a spare set of props as you do with most of them so you get a spare set of props I haven't damaged any yet you get a little screwdriver as well little USB to lossy micro uh, charging port there and it comes with a little 500 milliamp hour battery and uh, which is, is fine and it gives you good flight times the only thing is the uh, low voltage warning comes on so quick uh, you can then fly ages afterwards without any brother at all so um, that again but I suppose they don't want you to run the battery out but honestly it just comes down so gently it's really not a problem I would just constantly run it like that without any problem uh, but the good thing about the, the battery in the battery bay area is it's quite huge so uh, the 500 just slops around in there you can pop in a 600 which I've got old JJRC one there or even a 680 and I've got a 700 milliamp hour one that fits in there still no problem at all loads of room so uh, you get much better flight times then obviously uh, with very little extra weight so it's up to you it's your dosh uh, you've worked hard for it or however you get your money um, so it's up to you what you invest in uh, I think a good little beginner one if you're not too worried about uh, the filming and that uh, uh, if you want to fly FPV you can actually do it actually um, and very cheaply and you can carry it with you so up to you as always uh, yeah thanks very much for watching um, good old thumbs up does encourage me to do a few more mm -hmm.